creative curriculum is a great way to involve children in learning about science and music. Today we're going to do science and music together. We're going to combine them, do a bit of cross-curricular learning. And this morning we're going to think of bones. We're going to be singing the song Dem Bones and we're going to be thinking about the scientific name for different types of bones. I use the song Dem Bones to begin to get the children to think about the technical vocabulary for the different parts of the skeleton. We're going to start off with a little ostinato repeating pattern that goes over and over and over again. And it's got some very easy words. It goes like this, I'm going to sing it to you first. Through introducing the song Dem Bones, the children not only learn about anatomy and begin to think about the technical names of the body, but also think about singing in harmony, part singing, and also adding a rhythmic ostinato. I'm going to sing a line, and then I want you to sing it back to me. We'll do it in two bar phrases, OK? Bones, bones, dry bones. Bones, bones, dry bones. Bones, bones, dry bones. Bones, bones. This lesson is right at the beginning of a block of learning about bones, and I wanted to use the creative curricular approach to hook the children in to get them really interested about discovering new things. The words of the verses are on my whiteboard, and they tell a bit of a story. What exactly do they tell us about? It's the bones, how they fit together. Let's try singing it. We're going to start off with the verse. Here we go, everybody. Now the bones connected together, ankle bone and the ankle bones connected together, shin bone. The children are very keen and very able to lead the singing within the classroom if you're not so keen on singing by yourself. This activity can be made more complex for older children by adding another harmony part. Or alternatively, if you're working with younger children, you can sing it in unison. Amazing singing. But, you know, I'm noticing here the head bone. We're not really scientists if we call it a head bone. What's a head bone's proper name? Yes, Sam? Skull. Skull. So we are going to be investigating some of the proper names because in this song, we don't use all the proper names of the bones. Does anybody notice how these scientific words are connected to our song? Thank you. It's a challenge. Think about the song. Go on, Jo. Well, patella is your thigh. No, it's your knee bone. Oh, your knee bone. Then what will femur be? The femur is... Is your thigh. Yeah, go on. Think about the song. The pelvis. Is your pelvis. Good. You're right. And the vertebrae is going to be your... Your back. Fantastic. Does anybody know what language these words are in? Shay. Latin. They are indeed in Latin. Well done. And this is my challenge to you for the rest of the morning. I'm going to give you a selection of 200 bones. You need to match the Latin scientific names and the more common names from our song and put them next to the bit in the skeleton model. Let's go and sit down. As soon as I've given you your pack, you may open your sheet out. The one single Velcro bit shows you where the skull is going to need to go. Are you just hiding the wind? I'm going to hide the wind. And you decide to lose. Let's do the legs. I think we need the legs. And we need this. No, wait, we need that there. Or the other way round. Back way round. Through the use of this creative curriculum, children are involved in both science and music. It really brings both to life and makes learning fun. OK, year three. So far, we've been looking at the lovely story of the village that vanished. Who can remind me of the five parts of the story so far, the five most important events? Lavinia. The Millie is praying to her ancestors. The clouds show a picture of... We understand the importance of a quality text for creative learning. We've been really excited by this book because it's provided so many opportunities for cross-curricular activities within our classes. Good girl. OK, so that's the story so far. OK. Next, we're going to imagine that we are the villagers. So we're going to have a visualisation. To do that, we're going to start by closing our eyes. Now... You, the villagers, 
have packed up your bags. We enjoy working collaboratively because we enjoy planning together and teaching together. We can draw on each other's strengths and learn ideas from each other. What do you feel? What are you thinking? Okay, open your eyes. We're going to explore the next part of the story. The aim of today's lesson will be to explore the text through dance and drama. And this will provide an opportunity for the children to develop their response to the text. And this will help us when we come to plan and write our retelling of the story next week. We're going to imagine that we are the villagers and we are standing, staring at this gushing river in front of us. How are we going to cross it? Let's have a very quick think about the water. Can anyone think of any exciting describing words, any adjectives to describe the water? Owen. The water was foaming and bubbling. Fantastic. OK, so think about those words when you're acting out this part of the story. Think about the water, think about the stones. Very quickly in your head, so you've got to decide what kind of villager you are. I'm going to give you a few minutes to practice. When you see our signal, stop, look and listen. Off you go. Hey, Rachel, stand up. What kind of character are you? As we walk round, we'll be able to assess the children's understanding of the story and their ability to empathise with the characters. All the children will be able to access the lesson and respond to the text during the activities, particularly those children with special educational needs and those with English as an additional language without the pressure of an extended writing outcome at this stage in the unit. OK, we're going to get into a big circle because we are going to perform to each other. We'll also be encouraging the children to peer assess and give feedback on each other's performances. OK, now I want you to imagine that you are telling me the story of that exciting day many, many years ago. OK, who would like to start the story? These lesson ideas could be adapted for older children by focusing on several events in a story or by using perhaps a more complex text. Fantastic. Can anybody give any feedback to these two groups? Jasmine, what did you like about this group's performance? I liked the way how Thomas was doing the waves. The way Thomas was doing the waves. Fantastic. What did you like about how he was doing the waves? He was doing it gracefully. Lovely, really gracefully. And who could give me some feedback about this group's performance? Halla. I liked it because they helped each other and they take care of each other. That's lovely, thank you. OK, just before we finish off, who can tell me what learning powers have we really, really used today? Stan, what learning powers have we been using? Sometimes drama can help you learn about things about a story that you might not have understood. Fantastic. I think you're all going to be able to retell the story when we come to write it in a really fantastic, exciting, detailed way because you were actually there. You know how it feels to cross the river and be a safe villager. Fantastic. I think everybody needs to give themselves a really big clap for all their help. We've really enjoyed seeing all of the children engaged in the dance and drama activities. All the children were able to access the activities and they were all motivated to learn. This morning we're going to be doing tessellation. Can anyone tell me what's the definition of tessellation? What does tessellation mean, James? The lesson attempts to use lots of different learning styles. I evolve music within the lesson to make the children really think of maths as a creative topic. Two shapes together and they fit so snugly together there are no gaps in between. Yesterday I wandered around the school and I took my camera with me and I tried to take some pictures of things that might tessellate. Can anyone think of anything I might have spotted on my journeys around the school? Lizzie? The plaques under the office. Absolutely. There we go. The plaques under the office. Your challenge today is to create a tessellation and here's how we're going to do it. First of all I'm going to give you a piece of card. The piece of card is ten square and what I want you to do is to mark the middle point. 
I give each of the children a piece of card and describe how to divide it into four and draw a line to make a cross in the middle. Why might that be useful, Joseph? Because then you can um, map like pieces that you've cut out on the other side. Fantastic answer. It's the matching, isn't it? Because when I cut out of one side, I want to match it to the other side to make sure... And explain how, if they draw into one side, they can cut it out and stick it on the other side with sellotape to make an irregular polygon. It's really, really important that your cutting is absolutely spot on on your lines because if you don't cut accurately you'll have a gap in your design so what won't it do what's the mathematical word we're thinking about today james tessellate. it will not tessellate the lessons easily adapted to suit either older or younger learners for example younger children can make a very simple rocket style tessellation whereas older children can really be challenged to try and rotate their tessellation and make something far more complex jack was that yours can you tell me, this is your finished tessellation, can you tell me, did you have any ideas of what you imagined it might be? Uh, a knight's castle. A knight's castle, fantastic. Lizzie, what did you imagine yours might be? Well, it's like a tower with legs. Tower with legs, fantastic. Can you put your hand up if this was yours? Whose was that one? Uh, Joe, yours works really well. What did you think yours was? Well, it looks a bit like a Dalek, but with legs. I think so too, as if you've got a Dalek sort of moving along Doctor Who style. Fantastic, really good. We're going to try now to tessellate a song. We're going to try and tessellate a song by building a song up together. So we layer two different songs, one on top of the other. Mary Mack was a Glaswegian song and Furren B. Maheen just used nonsense sounds to build it together. So what we're going to do... We're going to I explained to the children that rhythms are often used in music, layered one on top of another, almost as if they're being tessellated. This is our warm-up. We're going to sing it in unison, all together. We listen to a song that can be sung as a partner song and sing it all the way through in unison. Then I explain to the children that it can be sung with the two songs being sung simultaneously, which almost tessellate together. We rehearse the song and then the children try and work on singing the two parts at the same time. The pulse stays the same all the way through. The pulse is like the heartbeat of the music. And if the pulse isn't the same all the way through, then we're going to have gaps, like in the gaps of your colours when you stuck them together and it won't work. So I'm going to ask everybody on this side, including Callum, you are going to be in charge. If you think of us as the two colours, we're going to tessellate two tunes. So you've got one colour, Foran B. Maheen, and this side, you're going to be on Mary Mac. Here we go. Are you ready? Sitting up. Oh, one, two, three, four. Mary Mac, Amazing. That was really good. I evolved music within my lesson because I wanted the children to begin to think about maths as a creative subject and I used the music to actually broaden their understanding of tessellation.